Hey, Sterling Valentine, welcome to your blogging masterclass as part of your internet marketing masterclass series. We're going to be talking about blogging tonight, which really is probably the top story to happen over the internet in the last, I don't know, five to six years. I mean, just kicked in the door, took over by storm. Blogging has now taken over so many different areas. In fact, blogging has literally transformed itself to not even be blogging anymore. Now it's actually become blogging plus because there's so many other things that blogging can do and can help you with that a blog isn't even a blog anymore. So if I tell you I have a blog and you have a blog, we could have totally different things happening. Mine could be uh, a regular what I did every day journal kind of thing and yours could be an entire full-blown membership site you know with uh, drip feed content and and un password protected areas and all kinds of other stuff so you know yes you may be looking at what you think is an information product site or a, a membership site or something like that a news site a social site but I promise you many of those that you're looking at may actually be built on blog hardware in the back end so it's really just an incredible story and if, if you're not talking about blogging while you're talking about internet marketing affiliate marketing list building then you're just really really missing out on a key key element that is growing by the minute it's it's a moving target and it's just very very exciting to be able to spend this time with you to talk about it because there are many ways that blogging and blogs can be used to get subscribers and sales and that's after all how we keep score right that's how we keep score in this game is signups and sales so our masterclass objective is to learn some advanced strategies to use blogging to pull in subscribers and then build your relationships with your list. And of course, I didn't have enough room on the slide, but to, uh, at the end of the day, get more subscribers and sales, which is obviously what we all want to do here. So, uh, you know, I, I love the word blogging. A lot of people don't know what the original etymology or the original word source is, but it came from web log, W-E-B-L-O-G, and a web log was a log, like a captain's log, uh, you know, of the things that have happened. It was a catalog of things that happened. Keep a log, keep a journal. And the web blog actually got closer to tie together and it finally became a blog. So to be a blogger or to be blogging is the act of originally keeping track of things on an online diary or journal, but the software that was used to create a blog really took a turn many years ago that to this day has really opened up so many possibilities for not just bloggers but for internet marketers of all stripes so let's take a look at our bullets for tonight we're obviously going to talk about installing your own blog in five minutes at the push of a button and yes it's that simple you know a lot of things on the internet uh, talk about with the push of a button but really it's you know ten buttons they say in in seconds at the push of a button but it's twenty buttons in an hour and a half right well this is actually literally one button you can push one button and have a blog uh, i'm also going to teach you where to find content to put on your blog both externally and internally because you have a lot of content in yourself that you don't know about how to use other people's blogs to drive uh, your own readership, which is really, to me, it's it's not even a master class tip. It's really just a simple, you know, a big dumb obvious, but a lot of people don't use it, and it's it's very very powerful. Uh, how to find and install the best plugins for your blog, and plugins are just ways that you can extend your blog's functionality. How to have others write your blog posts for you, and of course, so many other things that I want to tell you that I didn't put on the list. So let's just kick it off and really talk about some you know some basics of blogging. And that is that you install a blog as a CMS. A CMS is a content management solution. So what's content? Content is articles. Oops. Audio, video, downloads, photos, etc. Right? Content. Content online can be any number of things that we consume, you know, consumable stuff. So we consume content as consumers when we read or view or download. Uh, and, and to a degree, you can also say that user generated content is a form of content. So if you are going to a discussion forum, or something you are consuming the content at that site 
you know, just like you consume food for breakfast, well, if you spend an hour on a discussion forum, you consumed the content, and that content has to be happens to be user generated. But blogging is the act of using a web-based content management solution, which is a software program. Let's uh, change our slides here. It's just a software s program or a script that you install on a website. So let's go back to the real, real basics for a second to catch up everybody, even the, you know, how do I copy and paste, where's the on button of my computer type folks. Let's, we're going to bring everybody along in this because it's vitally important. We have everybody at the same level and on the same page. So anytime you use a program on your computer, let's say you use Microsoft Word or uh, some other program, you play a game like Solitaire on your computer, you're running a program on a computer, right? Well, that program happens to live on your hard drive, right? On your computer. So if you take that computer with you, you're taking the program with you as well. But now there's something, and it's not now meaning today, but now for the past 10, 12 years, there's something uh, that they're beginning to refer to as the cloud. And that means that the program and also the data lives somewhere else. So how does that work? Well, if you use Microsoft Word on your computer to write a letter to your aunt, the letter, that's the data, and the program, that's Microsoft Word, they both live on your computer. And so you have all three pieces, the hardware, the software, and the actual data all living in one place. But because programs are you know, ever evolving and changing, sometimes they have bugs and they have to fix the program, so now you have to download a new version of it and they upgrade them all the time. Uh, people started using the internet to store the program. And it sounds complicated, but if you've ever seen Hotmail, that's a program that lives on the internet. You don't download Hotmail and run Hotmail on your own computer, right? You use Hotmail up there, wherever there is. They keep Hotmail stored on their computers, and then you log into Hotmail up there and use it. Well, is there an equivalent like that for Microsoft Word? Well, there sure is. There's something called Google Docs. It's free, and if you go visit that, it's very much like a word processor. It's very much like using Google, uh, Microsoft Word, except you're logging in versus you know turning on. So you you already get the basics. You probably didn't know that you understood that the program can be somewhere else, and the data in the program could be somewhere else. So therefore, your CMS, your content your content management system, or what we call a blog lives on your server and you log in and use it to make posts and posts are uh, nuggets of content and when I say nuggets it's just a silly word that means a an article or a story or a photo of what you had for breakfast and post it up there. You know, if you've ever been on Facebook and you see people post a picture, hey, here's my kid batting at the Little League game, or here's a picture of the pancakes I just had for breakfast, delicious. That's a nugget. That's some kind of um, statement. It's, it's a full thought in and of itself. So you might write a, a diary, journal entry, or a how-to article, or create a little video, either a screen capture like I'm doing, or uh, I'll say... Uh, your camera video, a anything that you post up there becomes a post. So posting is both a, a noun and a verb. A post is something that you can post. So you would go post a post, if that makes sense, or you would go write a post or write an article, right? Or post an article. Makes sense? So there's your... Uh, blog itself which lives there on your server. It's important to understand this stuff because once you see you know which way the the everything runs and where it lives and how the engine operates you can really get a sense of 
what you're doing because not knowing this stuff, being in the dark, believe it or not, it does hold you back. So the best and most famous blog software is called WordPress and it's free and it's open source. Now open source is distinguished against proprietary sorry about that talking and spelling sometimes is difficult uh, open source is non-proprietary so that's a complicated way of saying that the person who made the program of WordPress made it for free and also allows all of the codes in the scripts the numbers and the digits of writing a computer program the coding of that program open the source is open and free so there's a whole free software movement out there open source and many people are using open source software and yes you can use it in commercial applications and no you don't have to pay for it it's just one of those wonderful wild west kind of things about the internet that it's free and it's free on purpose so it's not stealing so you can get a copy of the wordpress program or wordpress software wordpress script whatever and it's non-proprietary and why is this important to talk about whether it's proprietary or open source what's the difference how does that affect me well it makes a big difference because if you ever used Microsoft uh, Windows or if you've ever used Mac OS or any of these programs by these big companies like that you'll see that you can't ever go in there and change the code around it's it's called encrypted that means once they write the code they close the lid on it and you can't see what the numbers and digits and everything are doing it just works but it's locked away uh, so you can't affect the way that the program works you can use the program to make letters or to play games or whatever but you can't change what the program does to now make Microsoft Word also be able to do something else you know record a screen or something you can't make it do that because it's closed because it's proprietary and it's commercial they sell it and they want to keep you know the uh, control of what they're doing but open source software because it's open allows people to extend it with add-ons plugins themes skins all kinds of stuff and I'll explain all these in a little bit so I'm trying to give you the technological context and the background of this stuff because this is what a lot of people don't have and because they don't understand it we always know as marketers the confused mind says no so since we don't understand some of the stuff we don't proceed and there's an opportunity lost so you're taking a master class and believe it or not it might sound like basics to you but some of this is actually mastery level stuff because a lot of people even bloggers don't don't completely get all this stuff many do but I want you to be a well-informed uh, internet marketer so when you can extend an open source program like WordPress then you have a lot of third parties who are doing scripting and adding stuff to WordPress so for example let's give a real real basic uh, view you go to your WordPress blog which you've installed at mycoolblog.com I'll tell you how to install it in one button in a minute but you've already installed it for example in this little scenario I'm giving you and you go to write a post about your great breakfast that you had so somebody comes in and makes a comment uh, wow great pancakes and you've seen this before so maybe you'd like to know when people have made comments well that is a function that's inside of WordPress you can turn it on to be notified of comments but what if for example you wanted anytime that there was a comment to let other people who have commented know about it or maybe you want to uh, have people who've made a comment get an email that says thanks for that comment or allow them to see a pop-up window to subscribe to your list or to be given a special offer of some kind after they make a post see there's all these other kind of things that can happen that WordPress is just not built to do but because it's open source you can get yourself a plugin to make it do that you make it do what you want and the great thing is there are many different people using you know hundreds and thousands of people using WordPress so there are a lot of people wanting to do a lot of different things and therefore there are a lot of third parties making a lot of different cool things and features that you can make your blog do many of them 
a large majority of them absolutely free as well and it's okay to use them for commercial purposes so here's a perfect example um, let's say you have a blog for uh, for your little league team little league baseball team and you make posts about the games and all that stuff uh, well, wouldn't it be great to have a calendar well there are calendar plugins so you would just go to Google or your favorite search engine and type in WordPress calendar plugin and you will find a whole list you'll, you'll not only will you find individual calendar plugins but you'll find sites that have whole lists of the different calendar plugins available and what they do so you'd be running WordPress written by one team of scripting you know geniuses and you'd be running the calendar plugin on your WordPress site written by another whole team of calendar geniuses right so you can really stand on the shoulders of giants you can have many many different features and functions so I don't want to overwhelm you or confuse you but I want to show you that there is tremendous power in blogging and not just for the standard traditional blogging about you know what I ate for breakfast right I use that example all the time because it's sort of a self-absorbed silly little thing to be blogging about look here's my pancakes you know that's the traditional use I'm logging my life you know and and actually Facebook has taken over a lot of that sort of natural uh, look what I did you know um, kind of kind of posts kind of personal uh, just keeping a daily journal kind of thing but WordPress has really become a robust and powerful business tool so before I get into some of the great things you can do with it and how you can use it to make to get subscribers and sales I want to show you just how easy it is to install your own WordPress blog with just one touch of a button. So let's check out our bullets here really fast. So I gave you a little background because I want you to be a, a real savvy blogger. And now I want to show you this really, really easy thing to do. I'm going to make you a quick list of things and it's so simple. You'll be able to install your blog in less than five minutes. So let's give you a quick rundown of a little bit more technology. Not much to scare you, just a little bit, you'll understand it. So when you have a domain name, mycoolblog.com, then you need a hosting account. And it usually is some name server number, right? So you just point mycoolblog.com to show up at this name server. In the same way, that you use a 1-800 vanity number like 1-800 we install carpets cheap right that uh, vanity number actually rings to a different number you know like uh, 213-555-1234 right so when you call 1-800 uh, we install carpets it rings to this number. Well, this is the exact same relationship between a domain name and your hosting account. And there's one other uh, thing for you is to think about public storage facilities. This is another easy way to understand uh, domains versus hosting accounts. You have a public storage facility, a unit, right? And it's empty when you buy it. There's nothing there. And then you fill it with stuff, right? Well, imagine if you had a domain name that pointed to your public storage unit. And you can take that domain name later on, disconnect it from that public storage unit, and point it to a different public storage unit later on. So you can keep your domain name, even if you change hosting accounts, hosting providers, even if you empty out your storage unit of files, you have no files on there left at all, you have no pictures, no blog posts, no nothing and the domain name is yours to keep so the reason that you need to understand this is because once you have your domain and your hosting account set up then you would go into what's called C panel or control panel it's called which is usually easy to find because it's 99 percent of the time found here myblog.com slash cpanel right so write that down easy to find ask your hosting company if you have any challenges and cPanel has a large list of little icons of little cool things it does so this is where for example if you wanted to make uh, an email address like really cool guy at 
mycoolblog.com, right? Where you would go into your control panel and tell it that you want a, a an email address here. You would set that up. So there's a lot of different things you can do in cPanel. But the thing that we're most importantly looking for is a little icon called Fantastico. Fantastico is like a little robot butler. And he installs programs. If you knew how many files it takes to make up a content management system, a WordPress blog, you'd be shocked. Hundreds and hundreds of files. Because not only do you need all the front end files, you also need all the back end stuff. Now what's the back end? That's where you log in as an administrator and change things around. It's just like uh, in a play, there's the stage and then there's backstage, right? Well backstage is where you go in and make all your changes so you can go in and make a post do you want to post this yes would you like to make the title bold or highlight or something yes I think I will and then you hit publish and then on the front end that's where it's seen people will see it there and when they visit your blog they're visiting the front end but only you as a password protected administrator can go in the back and change something so if you don't like the background of your pages or you want to change the frame around to blue blog instead of a green blog or install a theme or a skin which makes it automatically repaint it as a completely different look you do that in the back end well there's as I said hundreds and hundreds of files so you could download them all from wordpress.com and upload them yourself but you don't want to do that you use the little uh, robot butler named Fantastico and you just click on the link that says install WordPress and it finds the latest version of WordPress for you asks you where you want it installs it for you unpacks it sets it all up and by telling it a couple simple things like what you want your your username and password to be as an administrator it sets the whole thing up for you emails you all your logins and everything and instantly if you go to mycoolblog.com there is now an empty blog sitting there ready to go now remember the blo empty blog is not the same thing as having an empty hosting account because if you have an empty hosting account with no files on it at all then when you go to mycoolblog.com you'll see nothing there won't be anything there before you put a blog in so that's truly having an empty hosting account but if you have an empty blog you'll still see where it says this is a post and usually blogs will have a what's called a hello world post hello world means uh, this is your first, you know, like a test post kind of thing. And then you can click on that test post, you can make a comment, etc. So it's there and it's ready to go. The, the dollhouse has been built, but no furniture has been moved into it yet. So that's the metaphor you want to remember. So once you've used uh, Fantastico to instantly install your blog, now you're ready to go and, you know, make your first post. And that's not really that difficult if you've ever sent an email through Hotmail or Gmail or something, or if you've ever typed a letter in Microsoft Word, it's exactly the same. They all use what's called a WYSIWYG. And I know you've seen these before. A what you see is what you get editor. So you can type just like I'm doing now, and then for example, you can, you know, go to format and you know change it by making it underlined or something like that, right? Real easy to do. That's exactly what it does for you. It writes all the codes, makes your blog post post look as pretty as you want it to be, and then you hit publish, and you publish your first pub post. Do another one. Now you've got two posts. And the great thing about blogs, the the thing to me that is the fundamental distinction between blogging and regular content generation is this: your users can interact with you. So instead of monologue, it becomes dialogue. And this dialogue is the key. And we talked about this a little bit in our membership sites masterclass. It turns content into community. And when you have a community, you can build subscribers and sales as well as user generated content. Now why do I keep talking about user generated content? Well, for example, you could have a blog post that has some hotly debated issue or let's say you have a blog post that says um, you know uh, how do you 
build a birdhouse. Maybe your uh, maybe your blog is birdhousesupersecrets.com, and maybe you have a hundred posts. Uh, I mean, a hundred commenters come in over a course of a year or something, two hundred or five hundred, and each one of them leaves their recipe, their secret strategy for, you know, how they build their birdhouse. Well, that page, including all the comments, is tremendous content, but ninety-nine percent of it is user-generated. And that means that people are coming not just to hear what you had to say, but to read the entire conversation thread. So it becomes your valuable content is not just the thing that you're saying, it's also the thing that they're saying. So I gave you a lot of background, a lot more than most, but, but this is the kind of thing that requires that kind of level of understanding if you really want to maximize it. And I really want to see you guys maximize blogging as much as possible. So now you've installed your blog, you've got a domain name, you installed your blog, it's up there, mysupercoolblog.com. You made the, your first post. Hi everybody, this is my first post. I'm not sure I know what I'm doing, but I hope you like it. Please comment. And then somebody comes along, hey, great blog, good luck. And then another person says, yeah, I agree with the first person. And then there you go, you've got a blog going on. And that's about as simple as it gets, right? But the big question that bloggers face is, you know, they stare at this, the big, intimidating, scary, white screen, right? What do I say? Well, this is where most people get stuck. This is why you will find an epidemic of empty blogs. Because people got the bug, and they got as far as pushing the button of Fantastico or getting somebody to install it for them or whatever, but then they got stuck. What do I say? Number one question, right? Well, I'm here to help you out with that. There's a lot of things you can say. First of all, one of the greatest things I think you can do is document your journey. Especially if your journey is about discovery. Now, you gotta keep something in mind. You have to give yourself permission. This is this is key, and you're not gonna find this taught a lot of places. I've taken blogging training, and they just they don't get into this level of depth of stuff. So I I really want you to understand what I'm talking about. You have to be able to give yourself permission because you have something valuable to share. Now we always underestimate our own value and overestimate everybody else's value. We always think well what could I possibly have to say? I'm just little old me. Nobody wants to know what I know. But you'd be surprised. You might know how to build a birdhouse and you say well that's stupid. It's just a birdhouse. Who cares? Somebody else might be dying to know how to build a birdhouse or be a big fan of the birdhouses you built. You never know. So stop being such a critical person who thinks you know better of a, that, that you know better than the world and just get yourself out there and put yourself out there. It doesn't matter. Be yourself. The world needs you to be yourself. And friend of mine once told me that there are uh, three great quick phrases that you can remember as an internet marketer to tell your story, share your results, and then as a marketer of course sell your system. That's last. But for right now if you don't have a system and you barely even have any results then tell your story and document your journey. So if you give yourself permission, then you can have a great blog called I'm trying to make money online.com. It's a joke obviously, but I'm saying, you know, that that you could actually call it that. Or um you know, uh my journey to online wealth. Something like that. See? So if you're documenting your journey, then guess what? You don't have to have all of the answers, right? All you have to do is have ignorance, questions, and a willingness to serve. Because that's enough, especially the service part, to serve a community by telling your story and documenting your journey. So what does that look like? Well, Maybe you have a question that you're seeking an answer. 
Here's a blog post. I want to learn how to set up a squeeze page. I don't know how to do it. So I'm making a blog post about my journey to try to figure that out. So first today, I uh, looked around on the internet and I found these things. Here's a screenshot of this. I tried that. I downloaded that. Here's a link to it. What do you think? Uh, I couldn't get it to work. Does anybody know how to help me with it? Uh, then the next day, part two of my um, squeeze page discovery journey, I tried this. See. I don't care if you don't know what you're talking about as long as you are leading me through the process of you finding out what you're talking about. And, you know, a lot of people have what they call imposter syndrome. Uh, we feel somehow that we're, uh, you know, inadequate or uh, you're going to be discovered somehow as a, as a fake or a phony, you know, and be found out or something. I, I hear this so much you wouldn't believe it and and honestly this is a terrible terrible thing to feel like. This is why I always tell everybody the waitress metaphor. If you went to a restaurant and got a job as a waitress your job would be to ask people what they want at the table walk 20 feet away to the kitchen tell the cook he prepares it, hands you the plates, you carry them out on the tray back to the people and the people give you money. That's it. But you didn't cook the food you don't know how to cook the food. It doesn't matter. You you don't you don't even know have to know how to spell the food. If you can go and find out what people want, and then go get it for them and bring it to them, you can make a living as a waitress. And it's the same thing. The, the online world is one big restaurant. You have people gathered together, not at tables like they do in restaurants, but in you know places on the internet, the discussion forums or search engines or whatever, groups whatever, and they're all gathered around because they have a common need. They're hungry, but they're hungry for knowledge, right? And so you can find out what they want and then go get it and bring it to the people. And, you know, just like at a restaurant, the, the person who who ordered the steak doesn't care if you cooked the steak or the cook, the chef cooked the steak. The steak tastes good to them. They don't care. They don't care where it came from as long as it's healthy and tastes good and it ser serves their needs. And they pay the cook and they pay the waitress. So think about some people who have jobs where they don't know in the beginning of the day what what the answer is. How about a detective? How about a journalist? How about a doctor? Or a scientist? Right? Therapist. And what do they all have in common? Questions. They're looking for answers to questions. And on the internet, one of the biggest phrases is how to. So these people wake up every day. Their their qualification is that they don't know what they're talking about. Who's the murderer? I don't know. I'm going to go find out. What's the story with the closure of that uh, nuclear plant? I don't know, but we're taking you deep inside to find the answer. You go into the doctor, and what's the first thing he asks you every time? So, tell me, where does it hurt? Why are you here? Right? They don't know, and they're asking. Scientists wants to determine the answers to the questions of life. You know, they do experiments to find out. Therapists ask you how you're feeling, what happened, all that stuff. These are questions and answers. These are professional answer seekers. So you can do the same thing by just being on a journey of discovery and finding things out. And remember to just take me with you on your journey. That's it, right? I just want to tag along and watch. So imagine, if you want to, that every reader is your kid brother. Hey, can I watch you while you do that? Sure, I guess so. I'm just doing stupid stuff like surfing around to try to find a squeeze page. So, Well, that's okay. I want to watch because you don't know who's watching. And you are a poor judge of what you think other people uh, is val you know is valuable to other people. You're a really really poor judge of it. I promise you. I'm still a poor judge, and I I do this for a living. And still, I think, yeah, but you wouldn't want to see that, would you? And everybody goes, yeah, we would. And you say, okay, I guess I guess I'm not just in a really good position. My judgment is in question, right? I should be suspicious of my judgment. And when you feel that way, now all of a sudden you'll start documenting everything, right? You'll start taking screenshots. Oops. For some reason, this uh, keyboard wants to correct me when I don't need to be corrected. Screenshots and screen capture videos, right? You'll uh, make detailed lists. Like seven 
steps to making your first blog post, right? Stuff like that. You can tell stories. Great way to start any post is So here's what happened, right? Just tell me what happened. Just let me tag along while you document what you're doing. So if you're a dog trainer, well, I would really love to have an insight into your mind, right? I would really love to get a, a slice of what you're thinking about. So tag along, you know, let me tag along. Maybe you say, today I had a client who every time, uh, you know, I tried to praise her dog for doing something good, she yelled at the dog because it was barking or sitting or something. And I really noticed that that's negative inverse uh, you know reactionary training which can lead to bad behavior blah 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 so I told her here's how to not do that and you know that that person was probably thinking that on their way home from training that dog then put it on a blog post you, every thought you have is a possible you know nugget that somebody else can benefit from so who are you to keep it from them if this is the community that you serve then dump it out there just do a brain dump and it doesn't have to be perfect it just has to be done. Done is good enough. Right? And you don't have to get it perfect, you just have to get it going. So get started ASAP. Just make a first post. You know, I'll give you permission for your first post. Here's your first post. This is my first post. I don't quite know what I'm doing yet, but I'm here to help. So watch me learn. Now, you can't beat that deal. Remember folks, people aren't paying a thousand dollars a seat to sit at your blog. It's free. If they don't like it, click, they could change the channel. Okay? So you just be yourself, do what you're doing, and be on a journey of discovery. And I promise you, when you change your mindset about this stuff, you can have an incredible, incredible blog. So when I did my first product in 2006, JV formula. I had a 90 day countdown uh, while I was making the product. I blocked every day. And I got comments from all over the world. I got people cheering me on. I got people asking me questions. They learned. People that spun off people doing their own products. And I got cards and letters from people I didn't even know, I promise you. Because every day I showed up. Sometimes I did a video entry. Sometimes I did an audio recording, which you can do with Skype very easily. There's a plugin that escapes me at the moment, but just uh, type in Skype Recorder and it can drop a couple bucks, and you can just press record, and you and the other person are there. Uh, you know, interviews are a great way to get content quickly. I took photos from the road and posted them. You know, etc. Screenshots my plans, what I was doing, and I had a huge, dur during 2006, during May of 2006, we had more traffic in two different 24-hour periods. Our website, JV Formula, had more traffic than the White House's website, whitehouse.gov. On two separate occasions, for that 24-hour period, our traffic beat that, so more people were looking at what we were doing. I say we, because, you know, I, I, I always think of it as everybody who's helping out, but what we were doing then they were looking at the White House website. So that, tell, that tells you something. People are interested, right? And then in 2007, I did the Internet Marketing Road Trip, where I did 21 days straight. And I went on the road. I spoke at a seminar. I attended a couple of the seminars, Florida and New York. And so as I drove up and down, stayed at the hotels, I met other marketers. I interviewed them, some in my hotel room, some of them just uh, in the lobby, a couple on the street, you know. Uh, one guy at the bar just hanging out and uh, brought my laptop with me and blogged and during that 24 hour uh, 21 day period I added approximately 4,500 new subscribers and generated about $12,000 from one-time offers now of course on that blog I had a whole community on the back end that you could join uh, and that, of course, is the precursor to MarketerLink, which, believe it or not, I've been working on for that this many years. Uh, that's our current 
internet marketing community for all my customers and students. Uh, but people were paying, I think it was like 197 or something, to get access to a bunch of different recordings of bonus stuff, some live webinars, and uh, the access to the community. So I digress a little bit, but I just want to show you this is a perfect example of using a blog to get subscribers and sales. And you want to hear the funny story of how this happened? I was with my girlfriend in the supermarket, pushing the cart, you know, 10 feet behind her for a late night shopping trip. And I said, man, I've got to, because I was living uh, in the Northeast at the time, I said, man, i got to get down to Florida for one seminar, and then the very next weekend, I have to go back down for another seminar. You know, i got to fly right back up on Monday and go back down on Thursday. I mean, that's ridiculous. It's, if, if, I might as well just stay for the two weeks. Uh, and then if I'm going to do that, I'll need a car. I might as well take my car. So I probably should drive down and make a longer trip out of it. Then the weekend after that, I have to go up to New York for a seminar. So in three weekends, I'm going to be doing 21 days of just, you know, basically internet marketing. I said, man, can you imagine it's going to, the, the cost and the gas and the hotels and the food? It's going to cost some, some, a chunk of change to do this. I, I should probably charge admission. And then I didn't say anything for a second. And all of a sudden, my girlfriend, who at the time knew me pretty well, turned around and looked at me. She said, oh, no. And I looked at her and I said, oh, yeah, I'm going to do that. And we both started laughing. And that's what I did. I just made a blog and said, I'm doing this. Come along. And the blog posts were free, but the community back end was you know, uh, an extra fee. And 4,500 subscribers in 21 days, many of whom are still subscribers. And I, I don't know my f complete... Uh, value per customer of those people but some of them are still with me and bought products and services and you know it's that's how it works because I gave myself permission to say I'm on a journey of discovery come along because look look at yourself look at your own life you like it when people show you stuff right and and we love to be a fly on the wall so look at it from your perspective if you would attend such a thing and watch then you know, maybe other people would too. So those are a couple great examples. And I've toyed with blogging a little bit on and off since then. I'm more of an event-based blogger. Uh, I try to stay within my community uh, now and, and just talk to them mostly. But, you know, you don't have to be on a big countdown uh, public stunt or something. You can just keep a blog. And many of my students have uh, very big, you know, blog followings now and they have a lot of people commenting, 15, 20, 25, 30 people commenting at a time. And I'm, I'm proud of that. So you can do it too. So there's a couple great examples. So let's move back to our bullets. How do you use other people's blogs to drive your own readership? Well, now we're looking at the other half of the equation. And it's real easy. You ready? Say something interesting comment on other people's blogs because we've been talking about it so far from you being the blogger but there's another perspective other people have blogs and if you say something interesting you make comments on their blog posts people will naturally click your name with a little hyperlink and then they will come to your blog so a blog comment and I guess you know forum commenting as well is a very very similar thing uh, making a post on a forum if you say something interesting and contribute to the conversation and remember the word here is value 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 I can't tell you that enough tell me something useful you know be useful say something inter interesting helpful uh, insightful don't just go on people's blogs and say yeah I totally agree because it doesn't help the conversation much. I mean, yeah, you can support the blogger. Of course, I suggest to do that, but that's not going to draw people into you. Um, and you don't want to be blatant, of course. You don't want to go on there and say, in interrupt a conversation already in progress and say, hey, I just made a blog post on fishing. Come see me. Because that's, you know, if you were at a cocktail party and somebody broke into the conversation and tried to sell you life insurance, you, you'd feel yucky, right? So same way. Don't ick people. Don't give the ick factor, the yuck factor. Participate. And then dovetail in by saying, you know, I also made a great post, uh, Joe, and, and I really like how you illuminated the difference between X and Y. People don't do that enough. In fact, uh, and recently in a blog post I did over at my blog, I was talking about blah, blah, and somebody even commented about blah, blah. So I hope to see you there and keep up the good work. Perfect example of a blog post that can pull traffic but isn't 
necessarily stealing it and being greedy. So as long as you contribute, you can get a natural sort of spillover of traffic. And forums work as well as blogs. But the thing that you want, of course, and we talked about this in our traffic uh, masterclass, is targeted traffic whenever possible. And who's better targeted than readers of other similar blogs, right? In fact, let that person do all the heavy lifting. I don't know how they got all their subscribers, uh, but I can just you know start mine, get the seed of mine going with subscriber with uh, readers of other blogs because if they read theirs, they'll probably read yours too. So great, easy way to do that. You can also uh, do guest blogging, which is an even better way to do it, where you would swap posts. So, for example, you would approach somebody with a similar size and, and a similar uh, topic blog, or maybe it doesn't even have to be similar size. Maybe they can, if they have a bigger one and they'll do it for you, that's great. And then you write a, a blog post for them, and they post your blog post for them. Hey, today we have a guest blogger. Steve came in, and he's going to talk about this. I welcome him and leave your comments. And then you let Steve come and make a blog post on your site so that now you're sharing and, and swapping traffic. So that's another great way to do it. So the best way to find and install plugins for your blog, it's really, really easy to do. Uh, there's several ways to do it, and I highly recommend as soon as possible you start getting into this because it can really, plugins can expand your value. Meaning, uh, if you didn't know that there was a plugin that counts the dollars of the national debt or something, I don't know, I'm just making that up. But if you found out that there was a plugin, then you could put that uh, countdown national debt counter on your blog, which will stimulate conversation, stimulate other blog posts, and allow you to provide more value than you would have if you didn't know that extension existed, right? So use plugins, use uh, extensions, add-ons, plugins that people write to, you know, enhance the value that you give. So you want to search for things like top WordPress plugins essential WordPress plugins best you know etc best WordPress plugins um, a couple other things you can do is visit other blogs and look for cool features. So for example, a very famous feature a lot of people have is, a, is an image slider. When you get to the top of the blog post, I mean the top of the very first page of the, you know, the home page of the blog, you'll see a big box with a photo and then the photo will sort of fade into a different photo. And if you click any one of those photos, it will take you to a different post. So there's maybe three photos at the top. A picture of a guy standing next to a car. Uh, my story of how I bought my car and if you click that it goes to that blog post but the next one is a picture of pancakes and that's a story about his breakfast and if you click that wait for that picture to come click that it goes to that blog post so now you can see you can tease people well that's not a standard feature in WordPress so you would look for a slider plugin right um, that's what it's called uh, or sometimes you would also look for a photo gallery plugin you know etc so whenever you see cool stuff you know, visit other blogs, and whenever you see cool stuff, look for the feature, and then go to a search engine and try to, you know, figure out what that is. Uh, that's a great, great way to do it because I want you to use what you like. If you like it, that means people like you will also like it. Uh, and don't be afraid to, you know, try to install them yourself. They're very easy. You can actually go to the um, plugins section of your admin panel not your C panel, but your blog admin uh, area. And then there's a place to search for plugins. So for example, if you wanted a calendar, you could go into your own WordPress backend, go to the plugins section, type it, calendar into the search box, and you will see search results in your own backend of WordPress without ever leaving your own site, not at Google, but on your own site. And if you click one of those and you like it, the little star ratings next to it, it will auto install into your blog for you. I mean, when I say push button, this is actually push button. And then it's there, 
now you've got a calendar on your blog. You just figure out how to use it and press post and now it's up there. It displays and you move it where you want it. Another great thing you can do with your blog is make it look more professional with themes and skins. These are uh, like dressing up your blog with a with clothes, you know, putting a tux on your blog instead of a t-shirt and shorts. You put a tuxedo on it or a fancy dress. So themes and skins automatically uh, can make it look a lot more professional. They can change the layout. They can give you other options. And you can even have a, a particularly a theme-related theme, such as a golf-themed theme or skin. Themes and skins are sort of, the, the word is used in the same way. So if you are a golf blogger, you want to get a golf theme and make it look really cool, you know. So these are some great things you can do to dress up your blog, uh, and and you know, of course, you'll you'll find stuff that's out that's that I don't even know about. You know, by the time you watch this, 50 probably new plugins have come up since then. So just keep looking, and you know, steal the art from the artist's fingertips. If somebody else has made a really great uh, blog with you know, I, f I love this blog because it's got seven cool features. In the header, the thing moves. And then over here on the sidebar, you can click and this happens. Okay, write them all down and find the plugins for them. If you can't find the plugins for them, then here's a trick. Go to Fiverr.com or Odesk.com and not only ask people to install plugins for you, but for them to search and find plugins as well. Hey, I'm looking for a plugin that on the side of the page you click this and it kind of does that. Pay the guy or the girl five dollars and she'll go search it out for you and give you the different options. I mean five bucks. Is it worth your time? I think so. So last bullet point is how to have others write your blog post for you. Well, there's a couple little tricks I, I like to teach about this. First of all, we talked about guest posts already. And keep in mind that whenever you have comments that is a form of user-generated content, right? So private label rights are materials that people write ahead of time knowing that you are going to want to put your own name on it. They write it to help you. It's their content creators who have pre-already arranged content for you to take and either just put your name on, which I don't suggest doing exactly, or rewrite it a little bit and make it sound more like your own voice and use it. So you can look for private label rights articles uh, article packs. You can also search for the initials PLR, which stands for that. So if you are a golf blogger and you needed some content, you could Google golf PLR articles and find a whole treasure trove of articles. Now, buyer beware. Some of these are certainly not as good as others, and some of them, frankly, are absolute junk. They, they sound like a, a robot with a headache wrote them. So you don't want to put stuff that makes you look stupid but you can certainly use it as the basis uh, sort of you know maybe jumble some up together and rewrite them even just use them for a kind of like starter material that you can uh, you know it fires your brain off and then you can start to write different stuff off of that another great thing to do is use dragon dictate or on the Mac it's called Mac speech and talk your content write with your voice right and you can believe it or not get a lot of content just by talking if the average speaker speaks approximately 200 to 300 words per minute and the average article that's posted on easyinarticles.com or something is approximately 4 to 600 words then you could make an article every couple minutes so imagine if you talked for an hour and the funny thing is, people who, I remember I said one of the biggest complaints is, I don't know what to say. Some of the people who tell me that they don't know what to say could carry on an incredibly uh, interesting conversation about their topic of choice. If you talk to them on the phone, they could talk for an hour straight. Really interesting, cool, insightful stuff that they know that would be interesting for other people to read. But they could talk about it for an hour on the phone, couldn't write it down to save their life. And that's unfortunate because you are generating content even when you speak. In fact, right now, and we covered this a little bit in the product creation course recently, right now 
I'm creating content just by talking to you. So I can have this transcribed, turned into articles. Uh, the ums and the ahs obviously can be removed and you want to get what's called a copy editor to edit your copy a little bit. Somebody that can, you know, make it article-ish instead of talking-ish uh, because reading stream of consciousness text is not quite the same as reading text written to be presented. But, you know, the sad thing is there are many people who, who tried to attempted to start blogs, never got their blog off the ground, and yet during the same time period that they failed at blogging because they didn't know what to say they had spent you know 50 hours talking to various people over dinner you know in the car whatever talking about really cool stuff that other people would have benefited from hearing and you know there it goes great content gold right out the window so don't end up like that use uh, Dragon Dictate use Max Beach uh, or even just use you know th those are two programs that will actually transcribe what you say in real time. Sometimes it gets it a little wrong and it recorrects the words and makes it look a little silly. Again, you can have a copy editor to fix that for you. And if you don't want to do the expensive software kind of angle like that is, just hit record on your computer and record your content by itself and just have a transcriber transcribe it for you. So it's a great, great way to generate content very, very easily. A uh, couple other things I want to tell you about really quickly before we wrap up and one of those is curation uh, and pointing so curation is a word that means uh, getting and managing and arranging things so a museum curator is the person who obtains and takes care of and arranges all of the pieces in that museum they're the curator of the museum somebody has to decide what stuff goes in there and that's the curator's job well there are blogs that are, believe it or not, nothing more than curation of other blog posts. So it might even be a roundup blog where you say, okay, today's really cool stuff I saw on the internet. Link, link, link. So for example, uh, cool story. Read this. Cool article. And cool video. And there's the link. So that's today's post. You are curating other stuff and pointing to it. And if you know the story of how Yahoo started, Yahoo was not originally a search engine. It was a directory, a directory of links. And a link directory is just an aggregation. Uh, aggregate means to get together and collect a collection of links. So if you remember the old Yahoo screen, it had like an outline and it said autos and this and that uh, you know similar to like when you go to eBay and it has all those little classifications and it would just had a link directory I think yeah it probably still does but that's how it originally started out became a billion dollar company by just pointing to other stuff in fact when you first visited Yahoo in the very beginning there really wasn't any there there if you know what I mean the only thing it was was science pointing to other places so it was a place but the place itself, Yahoo, was a place that was made up of a collection of signs to point to other places. So it was a place that didn't really exist because it just pointed to other places. It was a portal or a directory. So there's power in that, that you don't even necessarily have to write the great American novel and be the world's most eloquent speaker or writer. You can just, you know, if you're not good at that stuff, just point to a bunch of stuff. Hey, here's a cool article I found on this. What did you think? you know and keep it light and simple but just put yourself out there the most important tactic technique of all the single greatest uh, blogging tip I can give you I've saved till last and here it is and you're gonna wanna write this down because it's pretty complicated that's it get started because the most perfect blog that exists in your mind will never be as good as the okay but getting better blog that you create today. So if today's the day you're going to start blogging, get out there and do it. Send me the link. Let me know how it works for you. I'd love to see your blog. Uh, maybe I'll even come and comment, comment on it. I comment on my students' blogs every once in a while. So I would love to do that. Uh, it, it would be an honor and a pleasure to know that this was in some way a small part of your continuing success story. So keep in touch. You know how to get me, sternlyvalentine.com, and let me know how it works out for you. All right. 
Enjoy your blogging.